In the last segment of this tutorial, we had just gotten done modeling most of the stage, and I cut out most of the texture mapping because, let's face it, that, that takes a while. I am, uh... So now we've gotten to the point where we have our level, it is one contiguous piece, and um, uh, it, it looks pretty plain right now. We have vertex color view turned on, so there, there really is no lighting, it's all kind of flat shaded. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put some lights in the scene uh, over here in the Create tab. I'm going to grab some omnidirectional lights. And I'm uh, just going to put a few of these in our scene uh, pretty much towards the top. Because, you know, that's... Actually, I think we can do this with just one. Just put it up towards the top pretty far up. And I'm um, uh, under the... Under the Modify tab, we are um, uh, going to go under Intensity and Color Attenuation. And we're going to turn on the Showing Radii for the Attenuation Spinners so that we can see just how far these are going. I'm going to take the uh, End Spinner out here and bring it so it just covers most of the level. So it has some shadows going on there. And actually, the slightly downward shape of the level is going to help us it sort of matches the cylindrical shape of the light and uh, let's see we're going to turn up near attenuation turn about there well, maybe a little further we're going to turn the far up too alright and then let's see We're going to go over into the uh, Utilities tab, go to Assign Vertex Colors, and this little rollout here is going to let us uh, bake our lighting into the scene so we can see how it's going to affect the vertex color channel before we actually um, export. So we have our um, we have our mesh selected, and um, uh, these are the settings you'll typically want to work with. Sometimes if you're going for a really harsh lighting setup, you can go lighting only and then bake that. As you can see, you get some pretty contrasty things going on here. That makes pretty good for sort of a almost a, a global illumination setup if you want. You can turn the shadows off, go um, reassign that. And I'm um, uh, Alternately, you could go to lighting and diffuse and try baking that in. Everything's a little bit brighter. Your shadows aren't as bad. And um, uh, what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to take another one of these, put it down here in the f sort of in the shadowy areas. Put that down there, just so that some of these hard shadows in the background aren't as pronounced. Turn this up a little bit. Turn this one down. And of course, we can. We can keep rebaking this lighting into the scene until it looks the way we want it to. See, that one looks a little bit better. Still get some more contrast levels. And of course, you can also go in with the vertex paint modifier and literally uh, uh, paint these things into the level. Like, for instance, if I want to find some, select all of the upper vertices in my level, and uh, we'll just apply some brighter values to them so it looks like there's more light coming in from above. That is sort of the effect we want. And I'm, uh, See how that brightened that up a little bit? And we can collapse this back down to editable poly. And now um, we can hide these lights. We don't need them anymore. Under the display tab, I believe. Yep, hide selected. And now we have um, our entire test level. It's all one contiguous mesh. And what we need to do before export is uh, the renderer in Sonic Adventure works by uh, sorting the nodes in the scene in uh, by order of their distance to the camera and so anything past I believe 3000 units gets culled uh, you actually change this setting 
uh, depending on how your level is set up. So you know, if you have a really big level with uh, not so dense meshes, you can turn it up. Or if you have a very dense level with lots of little nodes, then you can turn that down so it will only draw the nodes closer to the scene. So what we're actually going to do is um, uh, I'm going to go through. I'm going to start selecting uh, like things like this. And as you can see, I'm going to pretty much just select chunks or blocks of the level to go off of. And like this right here, actually I can split this up into two if I want, I'm going to. You can split this, and to split one of these chunks off, what you do is you hit the detach button, and you make sure none of these check boxes are selected. And we'll just do this for every you know piece that looks like the render should need uh, should cull it at one point or another. Wrong button. Okay, and then um, another thing we're going to need to do is um, well, actually, I've already done this before loading the file, but usually in uh, 3D Studio, what will happen when you create a primitive is it will uh, it'll come with a default rotation matrix that isn't zero. Uh, I don't know why it does this. Usually, uh, there's 90 degrees in the uh, x-axis and 180 in the z-axis, and of course, I have no idea why they've done this. But um, uh, as we go through and process each of our nodes, we're going to center the pivot and reset the transforms. So what we do is we select each one of these, and then we click alignment. Uh, after selecting effect pivot only, we click center to object, and that's weird why is that not there we go um funky okay well anyways uh, yeah as you can see we have some stray vertices out here whenever the pivot doesn't actually assume the center of the model that's how we know that um, something has gone wrong with our detach process. We missed a few polygons here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to detach this, um, select it from the scene, and then attach it to the closest node, which would be this one. It's the appropriate node. And we'll just weld that back together using the weld tool. All right, and now when we go to reset this node's positioning, as you can see, it will actually show up in the center of that node. And we're going to go through all of these and reset their transforms as well. Now, you also have to take into account that if you um, have multiple instances of a node that require different rotations, you will want to reset the transform before you create these instances. Um, otherwise, you'll get exporting issues and your instances won't be rotated properly except for the parent node. Um, actually, we'll open this mesh up again. Another neat little trick for fixing some of the bad shadows here is we will use uh, the vertex paint modifier just like before. And uh, yeah, we'll get some of those. And we'll just brighten this up ever so slightly.
ready. Now that the lighting on that isn't so harsh. <clears throat> uh, actually, and then we're going to switch over to this node here. And um, uh, make some of that lighting not so harsh as well. Now that we've processed all of these nodes, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to take this entire scene, because the level we're going to import it to has a, a water table right around here, so we're going to move the entirety of the level upwards by a few hundred units, and um, uh, there's Sonic, we're all in the beginning of our level. We're going to hide Sonic because we don't want to export him as well. We're going to select everything. If you have anything selected before the export process that is not strictly geometry, the exporter will bug out on you. Um, I've tried to program it as well as I can, but it is definitely not the most uh, infallible script in the world. And so we, uh, from our Mac script tab, we, we run the script, and we're going to go into our... To our tutorial level folder. I'm going to copy the folder to uh, location. As you can see, I've exported once or twice already for a few tests. Um, we'll, we'll check export vertex colors because we did take the time to bake those into the scene. And then we will click on export data and it will take a few moments, but the level data will get exported properly. And now in your level, not in, not in your level, in your folder, you now have a bunch of object files and a d node table descriptor for how to place all of those files in a scene. And, uh, the next part of the video tutorial will be about importing those and working with the object and camera layouts.